Legion. I'm actually also a dual member with 501st. Okay. Um, but I'm here with the Rebel Legion today. Um, this is all the stuff that we make, um, either from kit form, we, you know, um, we sculpt our own stuff, cast our own stuff, we have back table, we do 3D printing, um, we do laser cutting. Um, my wife's a seamstress. Um, but the majority of what we do as a group, the Rebel Legion, is uh, we do a ton of charity work. Uh, we work a lot with Make-A-Wish uh, Foundation. Uh, we've recently done stuff with uh, Feed the Children. Um, God, it's hard to remember just all the charity stuff that we actually do. But uh, yeah, really the vast majority of the stuff we do is, is, is charity. Um, a lot of uh, charity groups that we work with will contact us um, set up days we call it doing a troop and uh, we'll have anywhere from like two to maybe a hundred people show up um, you know kids cancer hospitals um, we do orphanages um, animal shelter stuff we do a lot of to help get you know uh, animals uh, adopted and things like that well the 501st itself was started back in like 97, 98, uh, a guy named Alvin Johnson um, made some Stormtrooper armor for himself and was wearing it out uh, for the uh, uh, movie release of the special edition. And a couple other people thought that looked like fun and did it. And it just kind of grew from there. And I think, I think membership wide I think it's over 13,000 members worldwide something like that uh, most of which are active which means that um, they do a lot of events um, all of our costumes have to be approved so it's really escalated from just you know put, painting cardboard white and being part of the group to really a lot more serious you, you meet people that know somebody that know somebody that doesn't um, because most all of it's nonprofit stuff. Um, Lucas kind of leaves us alone um, because we help perpetuate, you know, the product. Um, we're recognized by Lucasfilm and now by Disney. And companies that work with, with Lucasfilm and Disney that do events contact Lucasfilm and Disney to request costume characters. And while, you know, clearly they have a lot of their own costumes, they don't really do a lot of that. So they send them to us and they request our presence at different events. And it could be, I mean, um, I, for instance, and in, that's my uh, Snowspeeder costume there, um, ended up working the uh, E3 event that was in L.A. earlier this year um, for, for EA. And I spent three days in that you know, uh, doing that. So there's a lot of different opportunities and things that we can do. Um, but we specifically, again, get asked by companies through Lucasfilm. So um, we're legitimate costuming groups. Now, you can't really stop somebody from making their own costume, you know, and showing up at a premiere or whatever like right, that. But if you're representing... But when you're representing, I mean, essentially it's a product. Um, we are representing the Star Wars product. Um, they don't pay us to do all this. We do all this in our spare time. We build all of our own kits and stuff like that. But again, we because we are recognized, we do get asked specifically, sometimes by Lucasfilm or companies that Lucasfilm does business with, um, they are looking for a Star Wars presence for something. They contact um, on our website, and I'll give you a card afterwards, um, there's a section where you can request an appearance and then we have a list of questions and this and that and the other and uh, we know the stuff we can and can't do now um, like say you have a comic book store we can't just show up at your comic book store and make you money it doesn't work that way um, so we usually look for uh, people to make donations to either charities that we work with a lot again make a wish being one of them um, or uh, a charity of, of your choosing. But pretty much all the stuff that you see out on the table, although I did bring some molds and stuff, I only have like two pieces that I've actually printed. Everything else is sculpted, 
back forms, uh, glued, riveted, painted. Um, we weather, we, I mean, we, we make everything. There's a couple of trick things that we do. So let's say you're doing a costume and it, and it has uh, belting. You know that it's a two inch belt. So you can easily pull that picture into Photoshop and size it where that is actually two inches and then you can figure out the dimensions of pretty much everything else after that. Uh, once you have a known size that you can blow it up to, the rest is relatively easy. Um, and then there's been people who have been to the Lucasfilm archives and were allowed to measure things and then share them with a specific group, like we're making something or whatever. So there's always that. And another neat thing is the majority of the stuff that was made in the original trilogy, almost all of that comes from... Um, already already made parts like I mean just looking at the Boosh helmet um, all these they're, and they're called Greeblies all come from different model kits tank model kits right. and things like that so as this information gets found out and shared people look for the models and this was all done in the 70s so some of these models aren't even made anymore right so you get guys that are crafty, that are really good at modeling, and they model them and we print them out. And then we clean them up and then we cast them and now we have an original looking part. We all shoot for uh, movie accuracy as close as possible. And um, it gets nitpicked to the nth degree a lot of times. Some people are worse about it than others. And uh, and I get it because I'm, you know, I'm kind of the same too. I want it, I want, when I'm wearing my costume and I go to an event, I want people to feel like they're actually seeing something that came right off of the set. We do, we kind of bust each other's chops about certain things, you know. I mean, for the most part, it's all in fun. Yeah, yeah. And it helps everybody make their stuff more movie accurate. But there's a difference between movie accuracy and wearability. Right. You know. Um, like, I have a full, this is my Sand Trooper helmet. I have a full Sand Trooper costume that's not here today. And um, I can walk real good in it. I can go up and down stairs. There really isn't much running in it. Um, I couldn't fight you in it. Um, you know, you can't see anything below here, really. So, you have to find the balance between making it as movie accurate as possible but making it something that you can wear for three or more hours. I watch Star Wars, I watch the original trilogy, trilogy often. Like usually when I'm out working, I usually just have it playing in the background. And um, I often wish I could go back to when I was 10, when Star Wars came out. Well, that's why we all get worked up. It's, yeah, it's, yes. I'm a big collector. Um, I mean, we've been collecting all the new toys and stuff that's coming out, and it's just, in, it's, it's insane. You can't, it's, it's impossible. I, I really need to play the lotto, uh, yeah, yeah. because I just can't keep up with the Joneses otherwise. So we get the stuff that we have to have and that we want to have and things like that. Plus, my mother, who lives up north, um, her days are spent doing her normal rounds to Targets, Walmarts, Walgreens, and everything else. And she's always sending me pictures of stuff that she's found. So, you know, she's probably spent $700 in the last few months just on buying figures and toys for me. For the, for the collecting market, what a lot of people don't realize is when the original movie came out, they didn't know it was going to be just this huge thing. So, Kenner was totally unprepared. They didn't have any toys available. And they came up with a, a early bird certificate package, oh, yeah. which was based, was an empty box that said, we promise One of the greatest marketing that, yes, and, and it couldn't have worked better. But all the stuff that they did back then, no one really thought about collecting like we do now, right. or like even when the special editions came out. Um, they made a bazillion of those things. You know, it's not much of a collectible if everybody on the planet can have one. Right. You know, so either you make a billion of them or you make a hundred. Now it's super collectible. 
especially if they pick, they do a low run of a character that just ends up being insanely popular. Like Boba Fett, um, he you know, a figure for many, many he many still years. is, you know, and I, what he has 47 or a minute, like 47 seconds of screen time in Empire Strikes Back, something silly like that. You know, but he was popular before anybody actually even saw him because of the cartoon from, you know, the Christmas special that we don't actually talk about. Right, right. Well, 20 years ago, uh, where I used to live, my neighbor, and I've always been a Star Wars fan, but um, I'm also a musician. I play drums, and I was gigging a lot. Um, and this is right around the time I got back from a, 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 a United States tour. And... I don't remember how it came up, but my neighbor, he was an older guy, I th- probably wearing a Star Wars shirt or something, and he goes, yeah, he goes, I used to buy all the original toys, I go, I have some of mine too, and he goes, well here, come check, come check this out, so I went over, he bought two or more of every figure back in the day that came out, he never took them out of the package, so he had, like virtually every original figure still carded and at the time I thought that was super cool I wish I could go back there now get on his good side if he's still around and get him to update his will and you know that sort of thing because he just he goes yeah he goes uh you know when I was he was about 10 years older than me 15 years older but he said they just him and his dad would just buy like two or three of each figure so he could open one to play with it but keep the other stuff. And um, he just had a, a ton of things. Thank you very much for your oh, time. Oh, no I'm problem at all. Some close-ups of your Oh, absolutely, stuff. absolutely.